there will be no denominations in heaven. And if we follow the four commands of Christ, just remember, when we go to heaven, we're not going to be Baptist, Nazarenes, or, or Catholic, or anything else. We're just going to be Christians that have a relationship with Jesus and will be with him the rest of our lives. Hey, everyone, and welcome. I am Morgan Gis McDonald, founder and CEO of Paper Raven Books, and I have with us today a special guest. This person has written the book called The Four Commands of Christ, Disciplines of Faith. And what is so interesting is that he's actually a construction superintendent who has been called as a layperson, as a layman, to uh, to write about spirituality, to write about God and, and Christianity and, and living the faith. So James Ford, author James Ford, I am so excited to have have you here. Welcome, James. Thank you. I <laughs> love being here. Yes. Well, this is an exciting time because you have finished writing and are publishing and we're celebrating the launch of the four commands of Christ. And I know that this is a book that was really laid on your heart. And I'd love to know just from your perspective, who did you write this book for and what do you hope they get out of your book? Well, it's been a long journey because I'm not a pastor. I'm not a minister. I don't have a ministry. I do now, but you know, when I started the book, he gave it to me a little at a time. So it was hard to figure things out. And then when he finally finished it, I figured it out that, hey, this is kind of for all Christianity, but most good, solid Christians have their own formation, spiritual formation, that they're happy with, and they have a relationship with Christ, and that's good. But what about the ones who have tried to be a Christian, and they worked at it, and, and they just, they're tired because they don't get it. It just doesn't work for them. I truly believe, because I was that guy, too, at one time in my life. And I think God gave this to me to go after those people who really want to be a Christian, but they just don't know how to do it. And the four commands focuses, it's simple, straight, direct, focuses them on what Jesus wants, not the church, not somebody down the street that's a Christian. Well, you got to do this. You got to do that. You got to be this way. You got to be that way. No, four commands. You do what Christ says, and he says he'll do anything for you. Ask anything in my name, he says. And you can be a successful Christian. If you follow these four commands and the disciplines of faith, if you follow these and take time, don't procrastinate, take time. If you do that, you will be successful. So what are the four commands? Can you give us kind of, I know there's a whole book on the four commands, but can you give us sort of the highlights, maybe a little bit of a preview of what we're going to find in the book? Yeah, I'm probably going to give it all away though, because the four commands, that's it. That's (laughs) that's the whole book. But the, the four commands... I think what happens, I like to read my Bible. That, that's the one gift I think that, that I have, that I, I love reading the Bible. I love, and, and I have found through my 40 years of, as a Christian that God opens my mind to certain scriptures. And I know a lot of Christians will relate to that. That when you read something, all of a sudden, it's like it just pops out of, out of you know, out of the book and just really highlights itself. So God's saying, look at this. Let's talk about this. Let's pray about this. And then he gives you instructions. He gave me instructions. One night uh, I was doing a job and uh, I'm in my RV because I'm a traveling superintendent. So I go state to state. I go different places. And in my RV, I was reading my Bible and all of a sudden God put in my head the four commands of Christ. I had to get a pamphlet, write it down fast, because it'll go away for me. I'm, I'm too old. He gave me all the scriptures. So I had to go back and look them up. Okay, and I had to say, okay, what does this mean? And the first two commands, they're lumped together, so I'm going to go with this first. The first two commands are called the royal commands from the Hebrew for 3,500 years. That's what they call these two. And they've been around forever, and the Israelis known to do this, or supposed to do this. But like all people, we just don't do what we're supposed to do. But the first command, but maybe I should set it up a little bit. So the Pharisees are trying to trap Jesus. They want to kill him. And they're trying to find as much information as they can get 
so they can put him on the cross up there. A Sadducees already worked on him and went back and failed. And I, this is my interpretation now, and this is what I write about in the book. So here comes this Pharisee who is a lawyer, and he knows it all. And he goes to Jesus, not knowing that Jesus is the author of the Ten Commandments, goes to him and says, what's the greatest commandment? And I'm sure Jesus is snickering in his heart, but he, I'm, I don't know that, but you know what I mean. And he's saying, love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, and all your soul. This is the first and greatest commandment. The second is likened to it. Love your neighbor as yourself. Okay. Those commands, he says, is what is the two most important ones. But right after that, he says this. He says, all the law, all the prophets hang on these two commands. All. I transpose that as some. He basically summed up the Bible. Two commands sums up the whole Bible. That's pretty incredible. But what happens is I start sharing this quite a bit with people because I was so excited, you know. And I'll get to the other two in a minute. But I was sharing this. I had a pastor in Nebraska uh, reply to me. He says, what's that look like? I don't know what that looks like. I'm amazed. Well, you don't, oh, I know what it looks like. I start typing in my computer, I reply, this is what it looks like. And I don't know if anybody gets this, but God kind of slapped me on the back of the head and said, no, that's not what it is. And I'm going, well, what is it? Silence. I mean, absolute silence. And all of a sudden, this is how God works with me. All of a sudden, three, four, five, six months later, he gave me all the instructions to his decrees. And I wrote them down real fast. Just like he gave me the four commands, I had to write them down real fast. So for the first two commands, love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, he gave me this instruction for it. And that is humble yourself and submit. That's it. Humble your, I mean, how simple. Humble yourself and submit. And if you go through the Bible, you'll see that all through the Bible. It says, humble yourself and submit to God. I'm like, wow. So I wrote it down exactly how Jesus gave it to me. Exactly. And then on the second one, uh, love your neighbor as yourself. He says, give them grace and mercy. I've given you grace and mercy. It's you need to give your neighbor grace. If you haven't walked a mile in their shoe, you have no idea what they're going through. Somebody might be snappy at you. Somebody might do this or that. And you just don't know what they walk through. So just give them grace and love on them. Don't get mad and, and bark back at them. Just love on them. So that's the instructions for those two commands. You, you need to just work on that. Hard to do. Because there's always something in your life that has been eating at you for a long time and somebody brings it up and you hear about it being pushing a button and you fly off. So what I'm teaching and I want people to understand is instead of flying off the handle and saying something, why don't you filter it through the Holy Spirit? Meaning, okay, I want to say this, Lord. I'm going to tell that person what for. I'm going to say this to them. No, no, no. But it's all up here, not here. And then God will tell you, yes or no. Then when he says no, you go, <laughs> I want to say that to him, Lord, but okay, Lord. So, Lord, since you won't let me say that to him, and I have this feeling, now I'm under a different aspect of life, and that is I have something against that person. And you say that I have to leave my money on the altar. And go get the beam out of my eye before I start yelling at a person that's got a splinter in their eye. So, Lord, let's get this beam out of my eye. I'm giving you permission to get this beam out of my eye. I filtered my language properly. I'm going to love on that person instead of being hateful. And you know what, Lord? You go fight that battle. You go work with them. And you go talk to them and help them with whatever their situation is because something's going on for them to do that. And if it's me, which you kind of say in the Bible, the beam's right here, let's get this fixed. And then we can go and, and lovingly 
work on that. So the third command, those are the first two commands, and they're called the royal commands uh, on, from the Hebrews. The second command, Jesus says to the disciples, they're, they're, they just got done with dinner. Um, Judas is gone to betray him, and there's 11 of them left, and he's talking about you can't come, you can't go, because I'm going somewhere you can't be. And old Peter's all upset. What do you mean I can't be there? I, I'm going with you no matter what, you know. And, and uh, in between that conversation, this is really interesting, in between that conversation, all of a sudden, out of the blue comes a new command I give you. Love one another as I have loved you. Here's the key phrase. Then they will know you are my disciples. That's what got me going. And God opened my mind to that. Who's he talking to? The 11 apostles. What's their job? Go and baptize people and spread this gospel, this truth that I have. Spread that. And they started churches all over Asia Minor and, and Israel. They started these churches everywhere. And this is for those churches. We have lost that in the churches. I hold all churches accountable. They need to preach this from the pulpit. This isn't something that's... that's uh, a maybe baby, you have to teach us from the pulpit. Love one another. So it needs to be taught from the pulpit. And the reason is people won't come to church because they call us the hypocrites. They call us all kinds of names. All kinds of trouble starts in the churches. People don't want any part of it. They want God. They want Jesus. But they're not going to come to church. And so I'll stay home and be a Christian. I'm not going to go to church. Jesus says, don't, or Paul says, but Jesus told him to say this, you know, don't forget to assemble together. You need to assemble together. We need to help each other because it's a spiritual battle out there. You've got millions of angels fighting against us and we have to put on the full armor of God and the church helps us put on the full armor of God. So does the four commands of Christ. The full armor of God, if you do the four commands of Christ, you are putting on, because there's a lot of people that know what that means. Four commands of Christ. If you follow them and you apply them to your life, you're putting on the full armor of God. And you can fight that battle. Then it just changes everything in your life. All of a sudden you become from a defensive Christian to an offensive Christian. And in that offensive side, you're able to cast down uh, demons and tell them to go away. You're able to pray intercessory for people. Um, I won't say who this person is, but very close to my wife and I. <clears throat> a Christian in church, like, I mean, if you didn't see him any other time except church, he's a saint. But you go out in the farm and you talk to him out in the farm and what, what the, what'd you say? <laughs> the filth that comes out of their mouth. You, you know what I'm saying? The, the conversation or the hatred. Oh, where'd that come from? So I prayed and prayed and prayed. And uh, I was supposed to go give him the four commands of Christ. And COVID came. And I couldn't. And uh, my wife kind of got on me about that. And I said, I'll, I'll do it somehow. Well, he ended up on his deathbed. Yes. And I never was able to do anything other than intercessory prayer. I was not able to present the four commands to him and ask him to accept Jesus, really accept Jesus, you know. So he's in the hospital and um, praise God, he allowed, or the hospital allowed her sister to come in because she's a nurse and heard his last testimony. And his last testimony was, Jesus is turning me into the light. I mean, saved on his deathbed through intercessory prayer. I realized in the power of being in the zone, and that's in the book, being in the zone, the power of the four commands of Christ, the power of doing what you're supposed to do. <clears throat> we pray for another gal who needed a, a kidney. I know there's hundreds of people praying for her. I know that, probably thousands. But I feel personal about this. My wife and I, at night, we choose, you know, based on who we know is ill or has issues, 
and we pray for healing for them. Eventually, she got the perfect kidney, and she has a kidney replacement now, and she's not going to die, and she's living. I know I'm saying it's hard, like me. It's, you know, we all have health issues. It's hard, but we're living, and we have an opportunity now to love our children and be with our husband and to affect other people if we follow the fourth command of Christ, which is to go and talk to people. So I just feel really... He has shown me, I guess, because I feel in my heart when, when that happens, see, Jim, we're answering your prayer. Now, I'm answering everybody else's too, but I want you to know what you're doing is working. And that's what the book's about. So um, I just think that if, if everybody look at this and, and really, really apply, then the fourth command is basically the Great Commission. And I don't have to say a whole lot about that one. It's go and disciple people. The difference in the book, the difference that I do is I've always said that's your mission in life. Okay, you need to, we need to do this. For the past, I, I'd say ever since I was a kid, you try to talk to somebody about Christ, don't get in my space. I don't want to hear about it. You know, if I want it, I'll come get it. Okay. So we've kind of, you know, let our pastors and we let our team go out and do it. And the, and the congregation doesn't want anything to do with it. I, I'm trying to change that. Congregation, you need to go do it. It's your job. It's your pastor's job, but it's really your job too. God says, go. As you go in life, go and tell people about me. And I tell them, just use your story. What's your story? What's God done to you? You don't need to be a minister. I'm a carpenter. What do I know? Just go. And you use, you know, your life. And, and then there's people you don't even know that have similar paths that they traveled. And when you speak to them, they relate to it. Because God is telling you to talk to that person. My sister does something I think is great. And I'm going to try to adopt it somehow. She told me, she, when we talk about four commands, she said, oh, oh, you won't believe this. But I have a, a, a women's group. And you know what they do? I said, no. She goes, they got to do a 316. They call it a. John 3.16, I go, okay, I'm, I know the scripture. No, at 3.16, 3 p.m. every day, pick out who's close to you and share Christ with them. Yeah, I, I thought that's pretty cool. So there's all kinds of things we can do for the fourth command. So let me just recap and then we'll get into a question. The first two commands are the royal commands. Love the Lord your God, all your heart, all your mind, all your soul. And the instructions for that is to humble yourself and submit. Second command of Christ is love your neighbor as yourself. Of course, I've always thought, I don't love myself. Why would I love my neighbor? You know, but anyway, that's give your neighbor grace and mercy. Okay, always, always. Third command of Christ is love one another as I've loved you. So they will know you are my disciples. And that's forgiveness. You have to go and give forgiveness to everybody inside the church. Yeah, you're supposed to love people outside the church. I get that. But isn't that the second command of Christ? Love your neighbor as yourself. So if we have a third command, it says a new command I give you. And he says, so they will know you're, that's in, that kind of proves my point. Apologetics, I think they call that, proves my point that that's inside the church. And then the fourth one is very important. Go and spread the gospel. Go and talk to people. And I have a little pamphlet that will be on my webpage, and, and I can't give them away because it costs me too much to make. But these are great, the four commands. It's got the four commands, discipline, faith right on it. A great thing. Hey, have you heard of this? And it just opens up, you know, a conversation. Because most people look at what happened to the Ten Commandments. I had one guy says, well, which of the other six are you getting rid of? <laughs> well, I'm not getting rid of any of them. God summed them up. Jesus summed them up. That's so good. Thank you for that whole overview. That is super helpful. And if you guys are listening and you're thinking, that's the kind of Christianity I want to be a part of, you said it yourself, you know, this is interdenominational or, or maybe even like supra, like above denominational, right? That this exactly. Is, this is the summation. This is the distillation, the four commands of Christ. You can grab actually a free copy right now. So we are 
launching the book, celebrating the book, wanting to get the book out to as many people as possible, you can go to paperravenbooks.com slash the four commands of Christ. It'll take you to Amazon. You'll see where you can get the ebook for free and tell other folks about it. If you've got, you know, uh, groups that you're a part of or people that you're in conversation with and you're like, yeah, uh, we feel similarly. We maybe want to be Christian or have been Christian and are looking for that spiritual sort of um, rejuvenation. This could be it. You know, this could be something that you could really bring to your small group, bring to your family, bring to your friends. So feel free tag folks, share this with folks. This is really kind of getting this out to as many people as possible. Um, paperravenbooks.com slash the four commands of Christ. There'll be a link right next to this video as well. So James, I'm curious that you sort of teased it a little bit about your writing process is maybe different than some uh, other people might've approached writing, but I think your story is, is really helpful for us because you had a real sense of calling. Like this was really laid on your, your heart to write this book. And I think that sometimes as authors, we feel that way we get a little bit nervous, like, who am I to write this book, you know, and, and I think it puts on a little bit of weightiness. I'd be curious to know for you, what was writing this book like? Uh, because God put it on my heart, and there's times I didn't apply my life toward it, very difficult, <laughs> because of the guilt that I felt in my heart. I had no clue how this was going to come together. It came together in pieces, like I said earlier. I got the four commands and then I didn't get the instructions for, you know, four to five, six months later. And he gave me the instructions. And then I was uh, meeting with people and talking to them about it. And one of them asked me, said, uh, don't you have that, you know, in your governing values set up? Because this would be a great thing to teach people with, you know, in uh, small groups and, and Sunday school and things like that. And my daughter their group would kind of like to have that. And I, I looked at them and go, uh, I don't have it. I don't have anything like that. So I went home and I sat down and wrote out the disciplines of faith right away. God just gave them to me. I mean, I mean, you practice them all your life. Don't get me wrong. I've practiced these all my life. So it's not like I had to research or this. It was something I did anyway. And I just wrote down the normal stuff that I do. And then God kind of put it on my heart and says, I think it's time to turn this into a book. And I'm like, uh, what? I'm not a writer. I don't know the first thing. So I went about for a year, maybe two years, uh, you know, doing this, doing that, putting together some kind of a paragraph here, paragraph there. This is what this should be. That, And it just didn't go well. I mean, it really didn't. And I was frustrated and, and disappointed. And then, I don't know, it might have been because I got cancer. I was able to spend more time on it. Maybe that's why I got cancer. I don't know. It sure makes me wonder. But I was able to sit down and pin out. And what God told me, says, your outline to do the book is your four commands of Christ. This was the faith. That's your outline. You got it already. Just fill in the blanks. And I go, oh, yeah, I can do that. So when I finally realized that, uh, you know, I just started writing. I, I mean, and unfortunately, if you're not a Christian, you won't understand this, but God filled me with his Holy Spirit, guided me with the information that was already in me. Th this stuff was already in me because of lifelong of living for Christ. It was already in me. And I just wrote, you know, what was in me. A lot of these scriptures bibliography you know i filed a trademark on the four commands of christ and i filed a copyright on that because i want that that's you know mine to use as a ministry that god gave me and he says well, where's your bibliography and i go what bibliography he goes well who'd you research i didn't research anybody i just read my bible <laughs> i said it all comes from the bible i read my bible and, and a lot of stuff's just life experience and and i just put it together and that's how it came it, it just was one but it took time and then I started editing it. Well, the, I went online and I uh, asked someone that if they would do a, an edit, but they said I needed a governing edit or what, what's it called? The first edit, it's a... Maybe developmental. Yeah, that's it. Developmental edit. So I paid them 2,500 bucks and they came back. And with that, they had all these questions on the side and they wouldn't let me talk to them about it. But I, those questions were not good i i could tell that that person doesn't know anything about christianity um, some of the language i used because i'm an old guy 
man covers everybody. And one of her questions to me was, what about the woman? I just assumed that, you know, because of my age, I covered, you know, man, just everybody. It just... Um, Humans. Where, where I come from, it covers everybody. Kids, teenagers, men, women, everybody. So, but I knew that was wrong. And then, so I had another one. And then finally I came to Paper Raven and, and we started working through it. And, and the editing process is hard. I'll say that. It's the hard part. Because you got to make your mind up. Do you want that in there or do you not want it there? Is that the right way to say it? And then when you go back and read it, all of a sudden you have a better way to say it. So I probably wrote the book three times. <laughs> I think it's important for people to realize that even when, I mean, you had like direct messages. You said you were like writing down verses and trying to get it down as fast as you could. Even when you have that sort of um, direct inspiration, we're still the human creator. You know, we're still going to be mucking around with the clay, trying to get it in the right shape to some extent. That doesn't go against the original calling. Like, the original calling is still there, and this is maybe just part of the process. And so it's up to us to, you know, be faithful and obedient and to persist and to just keep coming back at it. And even when the editing process feels hard and difficult and messy, it's like, this is also part of the calling, right? This is part of the package. And so to see it through is, is important. Now you guys know why I hired Paper Raven. She explained it so much better than I ever could. That's why I'm a layman. But you go to people like Paper Raven to help because you're right, Morgan. You're so right. Well, that's one of the things that inspires me about your story, Jen, is that like you are a layman. This is part of your like message and your mission. And you had, you know, no ego about the writing. You're like, I just want to communicate this, <laughs> you know? And I think many of us feel similarly, especially if, if it's something, you know, that we feel like we're called to write about our, our own lives or our journeys or, or what we've learned or spiritual inspiration for other people. And Maybe we feel like we're not a writer and that's okay. Like you can still write a, a profound and compelling and life-changing book just from that gut level desire. <laughs> like I want to communicate this with you. And, and I hope now, Jen, that you can take the book and that you can, I mean, we talked before we hit record, you know, that with the part of the cancer treatments and the follow-on treatments that you've needed, you've been going to the hospitals and you've been able to really speak hope into the lives of nurses and doctors and other patients. And like your whole ministry is expanding now. Um, it's suffering in a physical health related way. And Maybe God's using it. Maybe this happening at the same time that the book is coming out. Maybe it's all, maybe it's all according to plan. I don't know, <laughs> but it's quite a time. I, it's quite a time. I for told you. a doctor at the hospital when I was recovering, here's my four commands. I took a hundred pamphlets with me that I hand out and, and I didn't get rid of all of them, but mostly all of them. And I gave it to a doctor and I said, here's something for you. That's life. You're surrounded by death. You're surrounded by pain and agony and, and people suffering. Here is life. Take this and share this. It's life. And I just felt so good about that. And he just looked at me like, oh, okay. Well, if you guys are listening and you're thinking, I want life. <laughs> yeah. You know, I want this, this sense, this taste of spirituality that we're talking about here. Good news is you can grab a free copy. It is no risk. Just grab a free copy, even if you're just kind of curious, load it on the Kindle, save it for the weekend if you need to, but have this at the ready for when you feel like, yeah, I want to know what they were talking about with that relationship with Christ and, and being Christian in, in this interdenominational, like above denominational kind of way. Exactly. Um, this is this is Christianity at, at its core. You can go to paperavenbooks.com slash the four commands of Christ. You can click the link next to this video. Um, and we hope that it is really uh, an inspiring and life-changing book for you. Jim, any last words for our readers? I want to quote myself. In part of the book, I can't remember where, but probably introduction. I say in there, um, there will be no denominations in heaven. And if we follow the four commands of Christ, just remember, when we go to heaven, we're not going to be Baptist, Nazarenes, or, or Catholic, or anything else. We're just going to be Christians that have a relationship with Jesus and will be with him the rest of our lives. 
That is good news. That is good news. Thank you for being here, Jim. Thank you for having the courage to write this book and uh, see it all the way through to fruition. And you folks here, go grab a free copy while you're here, while you're thinking about it, paperravenbooks.com slash the four commands of Christ. It'll take you over to Amazon. You can grab a free ebook, load it on your Kindle, and it'll be at the ready for you. Thank you all for being with us. We will see you next time. Bye, everybody.